hold up. Let me uh, get a green light here on the stream. Um, uh, make sure we're all caught up here. Okay. Just a second. All right, there we go. All right. So I'm going to show you two trades. One of them is in the morning, uh, right around the opening. Uh, the other one is going to be later afternoon, right around the close. Um, so let's just ju just jump into it. So this trade here, um, I'm going to go ahead and play. So we've been in an uptrend here. Uh, we had tested the lows. We couldn't get through it during the breakout. Now, I just want to let you know this trade has nothing to do with any indicators or anything on the chart. This is straight up depth of market trade. Uh, actually, both of these trades I'm going to show you have nothing to do with indicators. Um, however, you can see we've definitely been in an uptrend here. Um, I'm trying to think what keyed me off on this one. Just kind of watch it play out. So uh, here, here, here's what it is. Okay, you may have just seen it tick up right here. So we just got t ticked up. So one thing I see is this twenty nine oh seven point zero zero. There's four seventy two sitting here, and then there's four ten at twenty nine oh eight even. So generally, when I see something like this sticking out, uh, size, usually price goes to size. And if you look here on the heat map or the auction vista, there's definitely been size that's been sticking out at this point for a little while now. Um, so we're making our way up to that. And I notice it uh, aggressively ticks up, I believe. Yeah, just watch it. See that massive tick up right there? Bang, bang, and it's banging in that price. Okay, so what happened was it banged up, came down, banged up, banged up, banged up. Uh, and it and it kept trying, they, the sellers kept trying to push it down, but they weren't able to hold it up. And then finally, buyers were able to step up to the plate and hold this 2905 level. And you can see my mouse coming up to the depth of market because I noticed that. And I also noticed we're only a few ticks away from this 434, which I believe I tried to front run it um, at 2906.75 to try to just get a few ticks out of this one because I know it's going to go to it. Um, so I want to show you that aggressive ticking up, and then it's getting pushed down, tick up, push up. Let's go back a little bit. Watch, Watch this battle that occurs here. See how the the sellers kept pushing it down, and bang, buyers eventually could hold it up. That I when I see that, I know. And again, they come up to the next level immediately. I know where this is going. I just know how this sort of play kind of works out. So you look, I throw in the order right here, and then I'm automatically coming up here to put my target. We're at 450 right here. Now, I know that if we break through 450, we may have another run the 422, but this is such an overextended uh, move up for a good while now. I don't know how long this is necessarily going to last. And also, it's um, it says 747 a.m. at the bottom. So I'm, I'm Chicago Central Time. The, the futures market opens up at... 8.30 for me, but my clock's all fucked up, so 7.30. Usually around um, 9.50 New York time, the the price will reverse. So I know we're about three minutes away from that. This could be a reversal point. Um, so I'm just trying to get a little bit out of it. And also, this is so overextended. However, I'm not going to fade this. You don't step in front of the train, right? I'm not going to fade that. So I'm trying to go with it. Now, I'm 213 in the queue, trade in one contract. 
And also, look, it's 245 versus 174. You can see I just put down my target. I'm 315 in the queue. That means as soon as I put in my target, 10 more guys stepped up behind me. So I'll get filled before then. Bang, we're in. We're in. Now you can see how I have the mouse covering. This is trade management right here. Um, I'm covering this. So I'm going to mark it order out if I click on this box and then my contract will come over here and this will go from 485 to 46. This will drop from 130 to 129 and I'll scratch to trade. Um, so now I'm closely watching it. Now you can see 800 came in right here. 800 market orders on the sell side have come in trying to clear this out and they can't. There's orders just trickling in on this bid. Look, over a thousand. Now this bad boy pumped up the 288 versus 185. So the strengths in our side were absorbing the orders on Team Blue here. Um, now we just need our market orders to come in and clear them out. So uh, what happened was uh, nothing moved. The DOM sort of got realigned right there. That's why the, the screen got a little twitchy. Um, that actually threw me off during this session, but it looked like it came up and then slammed back down because you can see this 36. They tr the buyers tried to get up here, but um, they only had 160 on the bid, and this and the sellers immediately cleared it out, pushing it back down. But that's a good sign for us because uh, Team Blue is trying to get it. Um, and again, we're approaching that size. You can see on the auction vista. I also call this a heat map. Um. Just because the wider this will glow, the more size there is sitting there. Um, so you, you may hear me throw around both of those terms, but I know we're going to bump against it. Um, and now look, we're, we got 311 back here on my entry price, which is good. That sort of is acting as a support level. Now we need this 31 to pump up. I clear out. So I, what I did there, all you notice the numbers in the center column all disappeared. Well, um, there's a tab right up here with this yellow and red thing. What I do is I clear out these market orders because it does help me to see what's going on. Because after a while, if the numbers start just continue to stack up and you don't clear it out, some of that is old data. So uh, it kind of helps your eyes to see what's going on. I Just from a fresh start because, you know, when you get into the hundreds or thousands, it's harder for your eyes to sort of dice you know, like, um, how, what a decipher, what is that goddamn word? It's, it's harder for your eyes to really see, uh, what's going on, you know, if, if you got all these contracts trading here and you're not clearing it out. Now that I cleared it out, I can see only two hit in here and 42 hit right here, which is good. So we're ticked back up. Uh, it's obviously a bit of a struggle. We're at 111 versus 244. So they're not able to take this down, it seems like. Bang! Look, bang. We immediately clear that out. A shitload of orders came in and just wiped this out, which is good. You know, it, it wasn't just flowing in. They slammed them with a crap load of orders. Now, if you look at it, it's 2 versus 114, 176 versus 324. So the buyers are obviously have the pressure here. Now, I'm a bit nervous Okay, because I'm seeing the size stepping up right here. Okay, we did have this 449. That size has been sitting there slightly longer. That's why this bar is a little longer on the heat map. Now we got this 451 stepping in. Um, and this is such an overextended move. It's so straight up that it just, to me, I'm I feel like that if the market starts to struggle, I may have to get out of this sooner than I want. Realistically, I want this 456 to get cleared out, and then we have another push up. And if this 451 didn't come in, usually you would push up to this 449 on the 2908 level. But now I'm having this size stepping up. The move's overextended. 
that's not good. And if you look at down here, the delta is starting to go a little bit lower. I take the delta. The delta really isn't like um, something I'm always taking into account. It's about really the numbers. You know what I mean? So what is the numbers telling me? I'm right here trying to get filled, so that's my target. I want to take one, two, three ticks out of it. We come back down. So we're starting to struggle real bad right there. You notice I come in, okay, we banged up. If you look on the auction vista here, we banged up and just tapped, barely tapped this 290675 level. Only 34 came in. And sometimes that'll happen. Sometimes you'll tap size with not a lot, not a lot hitting it. I'm not being very clear. Sometimes you'll come up to this wall because that's essentially what this 437 is. This is a wall right here. This heat, this is a resistant point. Sometimes you'll come up and just barely touch it with not many contracts, and then it'll slam, slam, start going down. We'll just start selling off. And again, it's 748 on here. I know for sure that you know around 750 generally, or 9:50 New York time, 8:50 Chicago time. I know that this may start to reverse at that point, and just just the way this is overextended, and and when it got up here, slammed down. There's a a bit of a fight here. I, I'm I just want to get out of it, so I take my profits there. Okay, I take two ticks out of that. You know, I want I want more than that, but just the way the market was sort of struggling. Look, look, you have a thousand thirteen hundred come in here. It's it's thirteen hundred versus ninety three. You know, th this isn't good. Um, in my opinion, that's not not a good th sign. Okay, that means sellers are fighting back. Now they clear it out. I could have originally got those three ticks like I wanted. Okay, but I decided to bail because of the way the market was struggling. And, you know, these are things you don't know. This is an in-the-moment sort of thing. And look how badly they're struggling to clear this out. This isn't pulling away. You have 52 contracts that pull, came in here, and it's not clearing away. I believe I'm looking for another play, but at this point I'm sort of done with it. Okay, you can see I went for another play here. I got filled. Bang. I just I got out. I scratched the trade right there. And that's good because it just went against me. That's a top, too. Look at that. Just look how that is. Now, I'm not sure where it goes from this point. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the move there. Looks like I'm going for it again. Do I scratch it? Yeah, you can see that I'm trying to get on the second leg here. I decide to get out of this, this shit. So we'll watch it here. Yeah, I canceled, I canceled my position in the queue, and this isn't the most ideal trade, really. I'm six in the queue right there. Um, bang, I bail out. And... And it just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. Uh, I, I should have bailed out a little sooner. So I just took two scratches trying to get from here to there. Um, and for me, it, it just wasn't worth it at that point. Um, so I'm going to cut the screen real quick. Don't mind the black there. Okay, let's come back. Check it out. Now I fast forward this some. Look how it started to sell off. So good thing I scratched the trade twice in a row, okay? Um, that happens. It decided to sell off. I knew it was going to sell off, so I took that two-tick winner right ar around here. Yeah, I could have got three, but just the market, the way the way the numbers were telling me, it just I didn't feel right on the inside. Um, and you got to go with that gut feeling once you develop that that sense with the market and you, you're in tune with it and you're one with the market and you know how it flows you know you become uh, one you know with the market I, I know that's some Chinese ancient 
sound and shit right there. Become with one with the market, some Bruce Lee shit, flow like water type shit. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that's sort of that play right there. Um, so, you know, I took the two scratches. So let's go ahead and uh, watch this whole deal again. We'll, we'll go ahead and watch um, from tray to entry to the two scratches, and I won't pause it. So you can see it again without any pause. So, so we're going for it. We're, we're, we're going for it. Okay, now they're aggressively attacking the next level. Buyers held it. Did you see how the, the sellers try to keep it from going up? Bang, and we're hitting the next level. I know we got to get in this, and I, it looks like I'm sort of... Tr chasing the trade that's not a good thing to do okay but I'm ready to cut the loss now we're absorbing and now the bid is pumped up a thousand sellers can't get through this um, numbers are just being thrown on the bid everything gets realigned okay now I'm in the money here I'm just waiting to get filled it's up at the next level so now I have a free look now, right here, I'm very confident I'm going to get filled, but the way it's just struggling back down, did you see the way it started to tick back down? The way the way it ticked up in that same mannerism is what keyed me to get into the, into the trade. And the way you saw it sort of struggle in the opposite direction is what keyed me to get out of the trade. So I look for things like that when I want to get in and out of the trade. So now I'm sort of taking a look at the chart here. This is just live trading. You're, you're seeing my mouse move around. Um, so I'm like, okay, if we break through this level, I'm going to try to get in here. So now we're breaking through the level. I'm going to try to get in. If this ticks up, it ticked up again. I think they're going to hold this 2907 level. I'm 39 in the queue, 6. I break break out. I, I'm not liking it. I'm just not liking it. So now it's ticking down. It's ticking it down again. I'm waiting to see what happens here. Are they going to are the buyers going to try to go for it again? Cuz the sellers are starting to dig in. I need to see some aggressive ticking back in the up. So that's good. They t ticked it back up. I'm, I'm in the trade. I got my target set. Not looking good, not looking good. I should have bailed right there. I should have bailed right there, but I didn't. The way it was ticking back, I, I, I didn't bail right away. And here's what I do stupid. I cancel that order, that, that order which I should have never done because this could easily have just failed at this point. So, you know, watching this, I'm learning, and this is why I record my trades. I, I should have been quicker about that, but luckily, I was able to get the fill and get out. And I think from this point forward, it just starts to fall. And I can just tell by the way the market is hesitating up here. The rocket ran out of fuel. Look how sideways right here. Look how sideways this is going. Bang, there it goes. And this is, this is where it drops in. This is where it drops in. So I'm going to pause it here. That's that. I mean, let's go a little bit forward. Yeah. So, you know, I made a good call to scratch those two trades. That happens sometimes. And here's the deal. People put out stop losses, man, and and they just sit there, okay? People put out a fucking, they'll risk a point. They'll risk $50 per contract, to get to try to get two points or something that that's not my style personally and if it works for you that's awesome but the thing is if I can fucking scratch the trade I'm gonna scratch the fucking trade because realistically you can only predict what's gonna happen in the next few seconds or so this is a sort of fly by the seat of your pants type shit now if you look at the fucking Delta look at how the Delta just started taking a shit here man the Delta started to take a shit at this top right here you can see that the delta started going down even though the price was going sideways. So that right there is also a sign that uh, this thing's about to take a dump. R realistically, I wish I wouldn't have went short on it, but, you know, I was didn't want to step in front of the train. You know, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is you don't want to step in front of the train. This is a clear uptrend. I try not to fucking fade. 
the trend. It, it just never seems to really work out. Um, plus, it wasn't that much size, and that size wasn't there long enough for me to consider taking taking that as a fade. And also, when I see size sitting above another level of size, like a point above like this, jet, excuse me, I just fucking burped. Generally, the price will rip through here and then go to the next level. But again, we were so overextended. Now I'm going to go to an afternoon trade. So this was, um, give me a second here. Um, give me just a moment. Okay, here we go. So this is uh, later in the afternoon. I think this is like an hour before close, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, I'm going to kind of go over what, what has happened here. Um, so it got real grindy and the market went sideways uh, for quite some time. Um, you can see this 10 up here. See that 10? If we go to the other, other, um, this was the trade we just watched. There's a seven up here. Okay. So what that does is the higher I make this number, um, the longer it'll take one of these little bars to print to the next bar. So uh, each one of these bars is based off of size. So the lower this number, you can get it down to one, the more of these bars there will be. It's kind of like the equivalent of a one-minute chart versus a five-minute chart, uh, except for that these bars are moving on size, not time. That's why you're seeing a shitload load more bars right here compared to these three bars on the, on the one-minute chart. One, two, three minutes right there. Well, within those three minutes, th this is how much size is traded. Uh, if I crank this down to one minute, there would be a shitload more of these bars, and it would be going a little more sideways. So generally when the market gets slow and, and sideways, I'll crank this up, um, which will sort of zoom out. It's like going from a one-minute chart to a five-minute. And again, these are based off size. So one thing I notice here, because I sat on my hands for a while, I believe I took a one tick win right before that somewhere in here. That trade's not worth showing. One tick wins are generally not. You don't want one tick. You don't want to risk one for one. Um, you don't want to go for one tick wins. You just you just don't don't want to do that if you can't help it. Um, it. I've tried it. It doesn't. It's a strategy that doesn't work for me. And I try to go for really as much as the market tells me. Uh, before it starts to reverse. So one thing I noticed how this play is working out. It was real grindy and sideways forever. I know it doesn't look like it on the chart, but trust me, it was. Um, you'll see this blue ball, ball right here. That there's a lot of absorption. I discount that. It can be used to trade, but I don't see how these really work out that well. Now what happened was there's a lot of size sitting up here. You can see how long this bar is. Uh, quite a bit of size um, on these three levels, and it's all together. Now, I know the size pulled off right here. So, look, you, you can see after this blue ball, we have a s huge push up, like a very large spike um, up. And it bounced off size right here and came back down. And then when it came back up to it, the size was gone. Not only on this level, but on the level up up above it so that's sort of keying me off that if we come to if we continue to come to this it's going to eventually break through okay so we start to fall off and there's a massive volume spike right here which you can see on the chart like a just out of nowhere and bang there's the size comes back here and it comes back off the price comes back down um, so that size showed back up again. Well, we come back up to it again, all right? And one thing I notice is usually in a slower, grindier market, when you get to size, it's gonna, if it keeps hitting it multiple times, it's probably gonna break through. So this resistance level I know is 
going to eventually get broken through. Now, if we came up really fast in a high volume market, it may only bounce off twice or it may just hit it, stall, and then rip through. But in a slow, grindy afternoon with n not much volume trading, which you're going to see in these numbers, um, it takes a few times of hitting it before I before it decides to break up. Now here's the thing, we're currently trading in, in this level and you can see how this long bar here has pulled off, the size has pulled off, it's only 430. All of a sudden 530, 6, 35 and 36 have all stepped in right here. So all of a sudden I have all this size that decides to step in at the next price above. So um, you can see how slow it is compared to that morning trade, how the numbers are just barely ticking in. So at this point, I'm thinking, you know, there's there's a trade to be ha had here. The delta is up, which is good. The, the um, stochastic is not above the 80 yet. It's still going up. But I'm not basing my decision off that indicator or anything of that nature. So we're going to just sort of let this play out. So we have 388 versus 269, and then we have 80 versus 19. So far, Team Blue has more numbers, which is good. And this is how afternoons play out. It's very slow. I'm going to continue to watch here. Size is pulled down just a little bit, not much. Not enough to make an, a decision. So 253 have come in here. You can see how the sellers are throwing in some. And they're canceling as well. I can see how they throw in 250 and then they cancel when only a few hit. Bang, did you see that? Bang, 487. This just pumped up to 487. We clear this out, uh, we went to the next price, and then sellers immediately cleared out the bid, pushing it back down. So this is, I'm um, keyed off. Now what I just did is I market ordered in. I know I'm not gonna get a fill at this 29.10, okay? I know, I know we're gonna break, start to break through here, but this is one of those trades where I've, I'm not gonna really necessarily be able to break even. Um, some trades you're just going to have to risk a tick, but I know the potential of making multiple ticks is, is pretty high at this point. And another thing that's keying me off is look at these bars right here on the auction vista. Look at all these green bars. I, I really don't care about the color necessarily, but look how they're just holding right here and they're going sideways. And now, and we're embedded in the we're embedded in the resistant level as well. You know, this was three layers of resistance because uh, there's three levels of major size sitting here. We're stuck in the middle of that resistance zone, and it's not coming back down, and it's starting to go sideways. And I know that usually when it embeds itself up in a, a zone like this, it's going to push up. But also, it's going to struggle here because if you look at the profile right there, look how it starts to come off and then it gets real thin, like not many contracts have traded at these next levels up here. Usually, uh, when you get to the edge of a profile hill like this, when it starts to roll and thin out, sometimes it seems to struggle before it will go. So I decided to market order in bang it ticked up I'm considering you know if I have to scratch I have to scratch but I'm gonna hold it I'm willing to take a one tick loss on this trade and you can see 900 is printed here nothing's coming in the 61 has been stagnant for a while that means sellers don't want it sellers aren't stepping up look at how all these numbers are coming in but the 61 is still here 
the seller and also I have the bid on my side because it's over 300 now sellers are sort of absorbing it that is to be expected because this is a resistant zone now that went up to 93 but it's still in my favor 300 versus 150 and then it's a thousand verse 98 bang okay so just like the morning trade what you just saw happen in a, a slower progression you know it ticked up ticked back down ticked up ticked back down um, but I could tell that it was gonna go up and now I'm hoping you know that this 500 starts to pull off right here once once we take the next level see it just went to 463 so uh, that's a good sign that means you know people are canceling and they're getting ready to get out of the way of this thing it looks like they're not willing to defend this level so now it's 180 190 verse 2 so my bids pumping up which is always good Bids pumping up, which is always good. I don't know where my profit zone is going to be just because there's so much size sitting here. Nothing's sticking out to me. That's why I haven't put down a target. Very slow. So at this point, it may be worth a break, break even if it just doesn't seem like it's going to work out. But again, it's slower, so you have to be a little more patient and when when the market's slow like this you're not going to usually get as many ticks as you do when it's quicker so again we have this 1174 versus 98 which is good however sellers seem to be digging in here i clear out the prices cuz i want a fresh view on what's going on 5 came in here 10 came in here verse 15 20 20 verse 20 22 verse 40 24 verse 40 50 so the buyers are definitely putting in work and then bang they cleared it out with quite a bit which is good that's real good now we're here look it's at it's only 301 remember this was in the 530s 530 only 125 have traded here and there's only 301 so that would be 426 right there if you add these two up so some of that shit was fake. Um, usually, you, that's to be expected. Look how they're clearing it up. Bang, uh, aggressive ticking up, tick down. I know this is going to go up. Okay, what am I doing? I'm looking for profit. Bang, get out. I get out right there. Why did I get out? Well, for one, that's a point. Okay? I'm happy with a point. That was $50. Okay, look, now it came back down. Okay, usually when you have a, um, and if you look at the bars here on the auction vista, if you have a huge push up, it's going to come back down. Go, let's go back in time where this blue ball is. Huge push, but then it comes back down. Okay, now over here, massive push, and then it comes back down. Okay, so I know that, you know, I'm going to sell this right when it starts to stall after that fast push. That's when I'm going to get out. So let's watch, let's watch this trade again. Okay. We, I'm already in it, so we're, we're not going to watch the entry. very slow bid still in my favor uh, more buyer market orders are coming in than seller market orders bang we clear that shit out we're holding this next level bang we're trying to tick it up tick it up tick it up bang look at that we cleared out 487 immediately printed at the next level see this 447 watch somebody throws in a market order for full size here to lift it 
It doesn't even trickle in. It immediately slams 400 contracts. Immediately. Maybe something happened in milliseconds to where a few orders came in before all of that. And, but our eyes can't see that shit. And I get out. So, yep, we'll watch that one more time. That was worth fifty dollars. I noticed that I was struggling, so I had to get the mouse over there. Really, I should have hit my hotkey for a, a limit out on that, but, you know, it's all right. So those are two trades right there for y'all. Uh, hope this kind of helps. Um, yeah.